In this video, I'm going to be repairing this Axiotron modbook. Now, for those of you who saw my previous video, uh, you would know that I actually already have an Axiotron modbook uh, that I upgraded to a MacBook 5,2 and uh, upgraded the CPU on. Now, um, this is actually a second Axiotron modbook that I recently saw on eBay, and I picked this one up for $100. Now, that might seem a little expensive for uh, what you're about to see here, but after all, it is an Axiotron modbook. It is very rare, so uh, I think once I get this fixed up, it'll be well worth the $100 I spent on this modbook. Now, um, as you can see, I do have it taken apart here, and the reason for that is because it did not come with any of its screws, which is quite unfortunate because some of the screws used in the system um, are not the stock Apple MacBook screws. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to uh, fully reassemble this system. But another interesting thing is that this ModBook assembly is significantly older than the one that I got on my other ModBook. Um, so if we go ahead and lift up the uh, tablet assembly here, you can immediately start to see some differences. First off, you will notice that this machine is based off of a MacBook 2 comma 1 uh, logic board in bottom case. Um, so that's one difference. But unfortunately, what that means is that all the connectors on the board are different. Now, I'll go ahead and start off here um, with the uh, backlight connector here for the inverter. Um, you can see that these connector or these uh, the older two comma one style boards uh, use the four wall connector. Which I'll go ahead and unplug it here so you can kind of see what it looks like. So you can see that the four wall connector um, looks like that and has a connector that goes down uh, on top of it like this. Now the later machines, as you can see in my previous video on the other Axiotron modbook, they use the three wall connectors which are a lot uh, closer to the board a lot a lot flatter but uh, obviously the connector is slightly different so unfortunately um, upgrading this modbook assembly or installing this modbook assembly onto a MacBook uh, 3 comma 1 4 comma 1 or 5 comma 2 logic board uh, will require cutting and splicing on uh, the three wall style connectors uh, for the backlight and actually this connector is the same. Interesting note here is that on the newer modbook assembly like the one I have already um, it uses the Bluetooth connector which is located right here as its source to connect via USB to the rest of the system. However in this machine it uses the keyboard connector uh, as its source for USB and of course to turn the system on. Um, unlike the uh, newer modbook, which only had two wires uh, connecting to uh, this connector, which only served to turn the system off and on. Now, this machine does not work correctly right now. Um, it, it didn't actually come with RAM, but I put that in. It didn't come with a hard disk either, but it did come with the original modbook restore CD, so that is the second one I have, uh, because the original modbook that I got um, also came with that. Um, and the last thing to note here is that this one does not have the GPS module. Um, I'm not sure why that is. I was really hoping it did because the one in mine uh, appears to be broken. But uh, yeah, unfortunately it doesn't have one, so um, this does not have GPS. So I'll go ahead and plug it in here, and I'll go ahead and show you what the problem with this machine is. Um, so you can see there that the green light is on the charger. So we go ahead and close the assembly here, and go ahead and power it on. Now sometimes the power button doesn't work. Um, as you can see, the power button is not working right now. Um, and also, this, this red wire um, in this connector here was uh, had come out, so I had to kind of push that back in. Uh, but I think it should work. That's actually the wire um, for the power button. but. As you can see, the power button is not currently working. Um, so what we're going to go and do now is just pull this out and just turn the system on using a pair of tweezers. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. So you can see the system chimed. And as you can see, there is appears to be nothing on the display. 
Now, there actually is something on the display. Uh, the only issue is that there is no backlight. So go ahead and take a really close look at it. With the uh, light right on top of it, you can sort of see uh, what's happening right now. So if I go ahead and uh, unplug the system, you can see that the display uh, sort of changes uh, color temperatures there. And that means the display is actually on. And if I were to have uh, left it on for long enough, it would eventually show the flashing question mark. Uh, so go ahead and plug it back in again here and turn it on. And then as soon as I turn it on and I plug that back in, uh, you will see that the lights up here are on now. And uh, yeah, so the display is actually working. It's just the backlight that's bad. And uh, this is actually a very common issue um, just on the regular MacBooks. Um, and it has to do uh, with the LCD inverter. Now, um, obviously it's plugged in right here and it's somewhere behind this metal shield. But um, it's very common, especially with the earlier MacBook 1,1 and 2,1 systems for the inverter to fail. And of course that will uh, cause a no backlight situation. Um, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is uh, disassemble this modbook, um, remove the inverter, and install a new inverter from a different um, MacBook LCD assembly because uh, these actually do use uh, the stock inverter uh, from a normal MacBook display assembly. So uh, yeah, and like I said, they do like to fail on these older systems. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap that out Plug it back in, turn it on, and see if it works. So I'll be right back. All right, so as you can see, I've gotten the modbook assembly removed from the system, and uh, now we can go ahead and take a look inside. Now, I initially thought the uh, inverter was gonna be down here somewhere, um, so I took this off, but all that's running under there is a couple of wires. Um, and you can see um, that the uh, connections right here, uh, you know, just go throughout the system from uh, this point. Uh, of the, of the uh, chassis. Um, so it turns out that the uh, that the inverter was actually up here underneath this white panel which I took off and uh, you can see that it just plugs in uh, using the standard uh, you know fluorescent tube CCFL style connector right there and the uh, standard uh, MacBook style um, uh, connector that connects it to the logic board and you can see that that cable just runs all the way down here and then it comes out to, and of course uh, connects to the system using this cable right here so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just put this new inverter in uh, here's the old inverter um, as you can see it looks pretty much the same um, it doesn't look like there's anything wrong with it but uh, there probably is so this is uh, the new one you can see it looks exactly the same um, so we'll go ahead and uh, get this hooked up and then we'll go ahead and plug the, the uh, modbook assembly back onto the system, uh, which is right there. And then we'll be able to test it and see if we now have a backlight. So we'll go ahead and get that all hooked up and resume the video. All right, so it turns out that the issue actually was not the inverter, it seems. So if we go ahead and take a close look here at the board next to the connector, you can see that there are some burnt up components right there. Now, um, since I can't be bothered to fix a uh, MacBook 2 comma 1 logic board. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and grab another one, put it in here, and see if that works. So um, I'm going to go ahead and disassemble this system, install a new MacBook 5 comma 2 logic board, and uh, then proceed with the testing of the modbook assembly. Alright, so just to save a little bit of time, I ended up just hooking up the board externally like this. Um, so now let's go ahead and actually I will need a whatever all right so I went ahead and hooked the board up externally so let's go ahead and turn it on and uh, see if it works so of course I've got the new inverter hooked up I've got it plugged into the board and I've got the LVDS cable connected um, so let's go ahead and turn it on all right so as you can see here the board is running and I do have it connected to the modbook assembly and look at that we have a backlight so you can see that we've got the flashing question mark on the screen right now. Um, so yeah, that means the modbook assembly is uh, pretty much fully working. So that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get this board um, installed in that other chassis. 
and then we'll begin the uh, process of testing it and making sure everything seems to work properly. So I'm going to go ahead and reassemble the system and resume the video. All right, so as you can see here, I have gotten the new logic board installed and reattached the modbook display assembly. Now, one thing I forgot to mention before is that, uh, as you can see up here, the uh, little white piece that covers up these antennas here uh, was missing. I'm not sure what happened to that, but it looks like somebody just tried to rip it off or something. Somebody has taken this apart before, obviously, and lost all the screws, so I don't know what they were doing inside here, but uh, needless to say, it should be working now, so let's go ahead and power it on. And the power button's working. And we've got a display backlight. And it is now booting off of the hard disk I installed. So I'm going to go ahead and let this finish booting up off its hard disk. And uh, then we'll go ahead and resume the video and take a look at the system. Alright, so as you can see, the system has just finished booting. Um, so we can go ahead and take the pin out of the display, and uh, let's see if that works. And it does, look at that, the cursor is following the pin just like it should, and this is actually the original hard drive uh, from my other Axiotron modbook, so it actually does have um, all the Axiotron software installed. So we can go ahead and open the on-screen keyboard here, you can see that works. Uh, I can move it around with the pin, go ahead and close it here. And let's take a look at about this Mac. Alright, so as you can see here, this is a MacBook 2 comma 1, as I mentioned before. Um, this board only has a 2 GHz Core 2 Duo. Uh, the original board had a 2.16, but you know, whatever. I'm going to try to mod this anyway to work on a newer system, so I'm not concerned about the hardware that it has in it right now. Um, so let's go ahead into graphics displays here. Um, you can see that it is the Intel GMA 950, uh, like all MacBook 5.2s have. Um, and then if we go down here to USB, um, we can see the Axiotron modbook uh, right there. So it is being detected. And the uh, Wacom tablet, as you can see right there, which is basically what the Axiotron modbook is, um, is working perfectly. You can see I can move the window around, and it moves just like you would expect. Go ahead and quit out of that. And uh, yeah, that is the system. So that has been the repair of this Axiotron modbook uh, that I recently got off eBay. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this video.